Hello everyone, welcome to UC Berkeley and welcome to our engineering visit today. We're so excited to have all of you here today. We know there's a lot happening around the world and it really means a lot that you're taking an hour out of your day to join us today. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. And I'll do a quick introduction of myself. Uh, my name is Christina. I use the she, her, hers pronoun series. I'm originally from Waiter, California and I'm currently a third year student here at UC Berkeley. I actually just finished my last final. So technically going on to being the senior here at Cal. Um, I'm in the College of Engineering. I study Industrial Engineering and Operations Research, um, which is one of the majors you'll be learning about today. But other than being a campus ambassador, other than being a student, I'm part of a spirit group on campus called the UC Rally Committee, and I'm involved in a lot of different organizations that center around engineering. Um, and I'll be today's moderator, so you won't really see me too much on screen. Um, you're going to see your two lovely guides talk about the College of Engineering, but I'll hop on at the very end um, to ask, um, ask questions to both of our guides relating to the College of Engineering and just Berkeley in general. So yeah, I'll be today's moderator. Thank you all for coming again. Um, and now we'll talk a little bit about the tour and how it's going to go over the next hour. Um, so today's going to be a virtual engineering visit focused entirely on the College of Engineering um, with some campus overview. So it's going to be a 45 minute presentation. Feel free to type any and all of your questions in the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. There'll also be polls and this um, session is actually being recorded. So if you go to our YouTube channel after this, you'll see that we have a bunch of different engineering visits that you can look over if you missed anything. Um, and like I emphasize, it's an engineering overview. It's different material than the regular virtual visit. So if you've been to a regular virtual visit, it's going to look a little different. And if this is your first virtual visit, recommend going and checking out our regular one. Um, same place you registered for this one. And it has a lot more just like broad content about the university. Um, and it's through a student perspective with no admissions or finan financial aid information. Um, so you can go to those departments directly for any specific questions. And as I said, I'm going to hop off, turn my camera off, but I'll hop, hop back on on the Q&A. So feel free to put all your questions in that function below. But yeah, that's all for me. I'm going to let both of our lovely guides for today introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelly. I use the pronoun she, her, hers. I'm originally from Hawthorne, California, which is a city in Los Angeles. So I'm from SoCal. Uh, I'm a graduating senior. This is most likely going to be my last tour, and I just finished um, all my finals. So it's a very bittersweet ending to a wonderful, wonderful four years here. My majors are political science and legal studies. I'm also pursuing a minor in philosophy. I'm very pre-law, but I did come from an engineering high school. So I have uh, quite an expansive knowledge of what it's going, uh, of what it's like going through the engineering application process and, and overviewing um, various departments here at Cal specifically. And then with regard to my involvements here at the school, uh, I had several research apprenticeships. So uh, I did one through the Haas School of Business, one through the law school and one through our uh, political science department. I was also involved in a myriad of organizations tailored towards advocacy in sexual harassment and sexual violence and trying to create a restorative justice task force that uses different models of retributive and redistributive justice to address those sorts of um, grievances. And then I also did two terms with Justice Corps, which is sort of a legal advocacy program similar to the Peace Corps, but domestically. I did a clerkship at a law firm. And upon graduating, I am co-founding a legal tech startup called You Do It uh, with my former boss. So I will now hand it over to my other lovely guy, Renesmi. Hello, everyone. My name is Renesmi. I also use the she, her, hers pronouns. I grew up in Kaohsiung, Taiwan, but I have lived in the Bay Area for over 10 years now. And this year, I'm I'm finishing my junior year and I major in bioengineering. And I'm still thinking if I'm going to major in business administration at this point. However, besides that, besides being a campus ambassador, I do a clinical internship to follow up with patients, but I also do research in the MRI field as well as tutoring. So once again, welcome to Berkeley. So on the screen, you're seeing a lot of really awesome places that we have at Berkeley. And you're also gonna see a poll popping up. So please do fill out for us of who you are. So we know who our audience is. Besides that, on the GIF that you're seeing on the screen, that is the overview of the campus. So you're seeing the awesome Campanile right in front of your screen. That is personally one of my favorite places on campus. And the reason is because there's an amazing observation deck and that allows you to see the entire barrier as well as the Golden Gate Bridge as well. So seeing we have a lot of 
juniors from high school and some co community and um, college students. So welcome to Berkeley's tour. And one last thing is that on the top right hand corner for the photo, that is Memorial Glade and Dole Library. Those two are also some of my favorite places on campus. And the reason is because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. So I love to study on campus in those libraries um, before COVID. So I'm also lo really looking forward to going back into those places um, this fall when we go back in person. All right, now to give a quick overview of the agenda and the topics that we'll be going into. So first, we're going to start with an overview of Berkeley. Then we'll move into an academic overview specific to the College of Engineering. Uh, then we'll be delineating information about, you know, the different engineering information, our courses of study, our different majors, things of that sort. Then we'll move into student life and resources. What is it like to be a student here at Cal? Uh, then we'll move into sort of the research overview, which goes into labs, makerspaces, and the like. Uh, talk a little bit about URAP, which is our four mount um, research apprenticeship program here at Berkeley. And then we'll talk about, you know, the legacy of our institution. And again, what it's like to be a Golden Bear. Perfect. So let's move on to an overview of the campus. So Berkeley was actually founded a long, long time ago. So we were founded in 1868. So we're the first UC school to be founded here in California. So we go by a lot of names. Sometimes you might be hearing Berkeley, Cal, University of California. So those are the synonyms for Berkeley. So once again, our mascot is the Golden Bear, and his name is Oski. Super cute, super fun. He's currently on campus wearing a mask, and he loves to give people hugs before COVID, of course. And one funny thing about Oski is that he actually drinks um, water or juice through a straw through its eyes. So super funny, but also super cute at the same time. In addition to that, since Berkeley is a public school, so our campus size is huge in a way. So we have around 31,000 undergraduate students, of which close to um, 3,800 are engineers. And we have around 12,000 um, 12, 12, graduate students as well, and of which around 2,300 2, are engineers here at Berkeley. All right, now to briefly over, overview the five undergraduate colleges that we have. We will start out with the College of Engineering, which has eight AB, sorry, not eight, sorry, 11 ABET accredited majors, uh, which basically means that you don't have to take the ABET accreditation uh, test upon graduation if you're a hiring manager or if the company that you work for requires that. We also has our, have our College of Chemistry. We have one of the best chemistry programs in the world, and that's due largely in part to being one of the only institutions in the nation that has an entire college specifically dedicated to chemistry. And we'll talk a little bit about chemical engineering, which is the only engineering major here at Cal that isn't in the College of Engineering in a bit. Uh, then I'm going to get into College, uh, college of Letters and Sciences is our largest college here at Cal. It is the most interdisciplinary college with over 81 majors and things ranging from Celtic studies to theater and performing arts to computer science to microbial cellular biology. Uh, we also have the Rouser College of Natural Resources, which has a lot of overlap uh, with our College of Letters and Sciences, but has a more environmental focus and it has more STEM prerequisite courses, which are basically courses that are more technical in nature that you need to take in order to graduate from the college. And then lastly, we have our College of Environmental Design. This is our smallest, small, smallest college um, and it focuses on environmental design, architecture and the like. Um, one thing that I wanna say is that whereas in our College of Chemistry and Engineering, you enter declared our other three colleges don't have that same process. So you have a little bit more flexibility in those other three colleges to figure out what major you're going to do. You don't necessarily have to major in what you apply to the school in. Um, you can take different classes, you can take different prerequisite courses, and then you can declare by the end of your sophomore year or the beginning of your junior year. Uh, one of the reasons that we also like to overview all five colleges is that it's actually fairly common to double major between colleges. A lot of our students in the College of Engineering will say, for example, pick up a double major with data science or a minor in data science, minor in a language. Most of our language courses are housed in uh, the College of Letters and Sciences. So again, if you guys have any questions about those programs, feel free to drop them in the chat um, and I will hand it back to Nesmi.
Awesome. So before we head into more details about every single major in the College of Engineering, let's talk about the brief overview of the Engineering College. So it has a really awesome mission, which states that transform the lives of the students by preparing them to become successful leaders and innovators for positive change. So as a student in the College of Engineering, this sentence speaks a lot to me. And the reason that I say so is because in every single of my um, engineering classes, I truly, truly do enjoy them in many different ways and some of which is just because you have such passionate professors and they're definitely leaders in the field and by those leaders in the field you definitely learn so much from them and in a way they just allow you to really learn a lot about different knowledge for example in one of my classes I learned a lot about ECGs and MRIs and different scanners that allow me to understand how medical um, technologies work and those just really blow my mind every single time I learn about them and one other really unique thing about the college of engineering and just Berkeley in general is that we are change makers. So I think this is one of the very unique cultures that Berkeley um, has for its students as well as the culture that Berkeley students create with one another. And another thing about Berkeley is that we uh, we really love to challenge the status quo. Like I'm a person in a class who always asks questions, who always asks why do we do this? Why doesn't this happen the other way? So I think it's really encouraging to really interact with one another at the same time to really allow um, Berkeley students to expand on the knowledge that we have. And in addition to that, a lot of Berkeley students are also entrepreneurs. So like Kelly said before, she is doing a startup. And for me, that is truly, truly amazing. And I know that a lot of Berkeley professors, they also have their own startups. And Berkeley actually has um, one of the highest numbers of startups that come up from Berkeley. So that just to show that Berkeley students, we really do care about what we're doing here at Berkeley, but at the same time, also what we're the impact that we're having um, on the people around us, but also in the world in general. And in addition to that, Berkeley is a huge research school. Berkeley is definitely known for its research and definitely in the College of Engineering, there's countless research opportunities for its students. And so, for example, once again, I do research in MRA and that just one of the examples that you can be doing here at Berkeley. So in addition to the culture at Berkeley, we also have such a amazing community. And so by amazing, I just mean that we're definitely a bunch of students who are really passionate about the topics that we're learning, but also we have compassion as well as we do care a lot about the social justice that is ongoing in the society, but also um, around us as well. And so Berkeley also really pride, um, is really proud about its spirit and pride as well. A lot of students, they love to join different clubs, different meetings, different activities to really voice their opinions about the society and want to make it better. And lastly, Berkeley is truly, truly a very diverse and a very diverse community. So at the same time, you can definitely meet a lot of people from different backgrounds and all of those have really amazing stories that really always amazes me when I hear about their stories. All right, let's get into the academic overview. So you're gonna see a poll pop up on your screen just asking, what are you interested in? Um, I think you can select multiple things, so feel free to do that. It helps us tailor our tour just a little bit more and focus on the majors that you guys are interested in. You can see a major distribution to the right just to see how much of the general college of engineering population is majoring in these specific ones. There, like I said, there are 11 majors within the College of Engineering. All are ranked within the top nine globally. Um, and then one thing that I really want, quickly wanted to switch on uh, or touch on is switching majors. Switching majors within COE is possible, but it is complicated. One thing that we really like to stress is that you should be doing a lot of research into what major you want to apply for before coming to Cal. Um, and this is because there are a ton of technical prerequisites that you need to do in order to graduate on time in Berkeley. We're really stressing trying to get students to graduate in four years. You can take a fifth year. There are several paths for that. Um, but switching majors is something that you really, really need to do in your first or second semester. It's not impossible to do it after that. It just gets a lot more difficult because of the brevity of courses that you're going to need to take in order to graduate on time. So that's just a quick note on that. Uh, we also have quite a few postgraduate paths for our College of Engineering students. A lot of students will go directly into industry, uh, working in, say, for example, like aerospace corporations like Boeing or Northrop Grumman. We also have quite a few students that go into graduate school, pursuing their MSs, PhDs, um, doctorates of engineering and the like. We also have quite a few students that will go directly into research. So you can see a class breakdown, a uh, profile of the class breakdown um, and where people are going after college uh, on Berkeley's engineering website. And yeah, so there's a variety of paths that students will pursue subsequent to college engineering. And it's, it's really what you make of it.
and I will hand it back to you, Nesmi. Perfect. So to start out of the majors that we have, so definitely one of the most popular one and also one of the most difficult one to get into would be engineering undeclared. And the reason is because um, if you do come in undeclared for engineering major, that means that you can basically basically choose from any of the 10 majors that we offer within the College of Engineering. And you just have to declare the major by the end of your fourth semester here at Berkeley. So I know a lot of people at Berkeley who do engineer undeclared for the first or the first two years here at Berkeley. And they really do have the opportunity to really explore around to really understand what exactly they're interested um, what exactly interests them in engineering, and they can then choose to pursue whatever path that they're interested in. So besides engineering undeclared, we also have nuclear engineering. So this major really emphasizes on the study of nuclear interactions and radiation. And it also sometimes allows students to get an introduction to molecular imaging or sometimes other theories within the nuclear field, as well as um, fusion power engineering. So all those terms I'm not as familiar with. However, I just know that students who are interested, for example, in a um, scientific career or research or um, wants to be a professor in the future, they can go after completing this major, they can go on and do a PhD to allow them to pursue the path as well. So the third major in engineering is one of the most familiar one to me is bioengineering because that's my home major. And so I'm very excited every single time when I get to talk about bioengineering. And the reason is because there's four different concentrations within bioengineering and pers my personal favorite is definitely medical imaging. And so that's the reason that I'm doing MRI research. So as a bioengineering major, you can choose four different concentrations. So one of which will be tissue engineering, the other one will be um, medical imaging, the other one will be sensors. And there's one more that I cannot remember right now, but um, there, the, all the information is on the website for bioengineering at Berkeley. But in addition to that, I really do enjoy every single class that bioengineering has to offer. For example, we take all classes all the way from chemistry to physics, but also we get a lot of emphasis on biology as well, on how sensors work, and definitely in addition to that, how tissues and cell um, work with one another to really function and allow us to be human beings. So sometimes if you see tissue engineering about creating intestine, for example, those are things that we do as a bioengineer. So there's definitely a, a huge variety of fields that you can go into if you do choose to major in bioengineering. And so a lot of paths after bioengineering, some of the most popular ones will be going into med school, for example. And a lot of students like me, I personally want to pursue a PhD um, degree after I graduate from Berkeley undergrad. All right, now continuing in our engineering majors and going to talk briefly about industrial engineering and operations research. I found that a lot of students graduating from high school really don't know what this major is about, um, but it really touches on complex systems operation and making processes more efficient, um, effective, and safe. So this is, you know, your, your linear and nonlinear optimization, things of that sort. Um, it's for people. It's very, very math focused. Uh, a lot of my close friends that are in the major will say, oh, it's just applied math disguised as an engineering major. Um, so it's very, very math centric. Um, but it is definitely the most business like major in um, in the College of Engineering. So if you're interested in sort of a crossbreed between math, entrepreneurship and business and engineering, this is a really fantastic program for you. Additionally, we have material science and engineering. Um, this goes into desirable material properties, function, environmental impact, and feasibility and cost. Uh, I interned at Boeing when I was in high school, and I worked specifically within their material science department. So we did a lot of things like coupon yield testing for 3D printed composites, things of that sort. You get a lot of time in maker spaces and labs within this, uh, within this major, and it's really, really great for people that are interested in product design, iteration, and things like that. Um, and so I'll hand it back to Renesmee. So the next major that we're going to be talking about would be civil and environmental engineering. So I once again have a lot of friends who are in this major. So if you're someone who is interested in participating in, um, for example, in cutting edge research that would address the societal needs for well designed or well operating buildings, for example. So if you consider yourself as a construction person, or if you're interested in doing an energy transportation or sometimes even in water systems, this might be the major for you. So um, this major is amazingly well, doing really well here at Berkeley. So both the undergrad as well as the graduate division will rank um, number one globally. So super awesome if you get into this major. 
And in addition to that, we also have a really cool hall called Davis Hall, and that is home to um, students in civil and environmental engineering. So in Davis Hall, there is a structural and earthquake engineering lab. And so that space allows students to really try out different parts of the society, for example, part of the Golden Gate Bridge, as well as part of the California Highway, they're all tested in um, the construction bay in Davis Hall that really allows students to get hands-on experience and really make an impact in the society that they live in as well. So besides civil and environmental engineering, we also have mechanical engineering. So this is basically just short for MECI. So a lot of students, they would work on machine design, sometimes in 3D printing as well, and sometimes even in robotics as well. So if you're that, those type of students, this might be the major that you're looking into. All right, now continuing with our engineering majors. So we do have a subset of engineering majors in the College of Engineering that are not ABET accredited, as I mentioned earlier. So these aren't part of the core 11, um, but we have energy engineering, engineering mathematics and statistics, engineering physics and environmental engineering sciences. Um, like I said, they're not ABET accredited. However, uh, they do give you quite a nuanced approach to each of these disciplines. So if this is something that you're really, really interested in, one of these sort of core tenants, I highly recommend looking into the processes or looking into the departments and the majors because ABT accreditation is not something that a lot of companies ask for. Um, but basically uh, it gets into, like I said, a really nuanced focus on certain things. For example, green technology, energy systems. If you're really, really into math, science, biology, physics, um, these are more theoretical in the research side of engineering um, than application-based and practical-based. Um, but you can also do a double major for um, both sides of it. So if you want a double major in something that is an engineering science, as well as one of our core majors in the College of Engineering, that's totally up to you. Uh, just make sure that you're not overloading your course load and that you're getting a more holistic approach to your education that's satisfactory to your needs and wants as a student in the College of Engineering. All right, so moving on to EECS, which stands for Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. And based on the poll, a lot of you are really interested in EECS, and I'm not surprised. And the reason is because EECS is actually one of the biggest majors that Berkeley has to offer. So a lot of students choose to do EECS when they're interested in software engineering, for example, or if Convolution sounds familiar to you or interesting to you, um, this is the major for you. And so in this major, you will be learning a lot about feedback control systems. So those are the systems that actually control how autopilot works. So a lot of things related to Tesla, for example. And once again, if you're interested in medical imaging and how sensors work and how people design and develop um, MRI scans in CAT scan and PET scan, all the medical imaging scans, they're also related to EECS. So if you're a person who is really interested in understanding the theory behind those sensors or really just want to do some software engineering, this will be the major for you. In addition to that, EECS, in addition to a computer science major, these two majors offer um, a fifth year master program for students here at Berkeley as well. So if you're someone who is interested in that, you can look more into that field as well. All right, way back when we were doing in-person tours, this was the number one question I would get on engineering tours, like immediately after we started. What's the difference between EECS and computer science? Um, so first and foremost, they're housed in different colleges. EECS is housed in our College of Engineering. And like I said previously, if you are admitted into the College of Engineering for EECS, this is your major. You are declared all four years. Um, conversely, within our College of Letters and Sciences, you go in, uh, it, as a part of the college, but you don't, you're not automatically declared. This is something that you have to apply into, which means that throughout your prerequisite courses, which are courses that you need to take in your freshman and sophomore year, you need to maintain a certain GPA and then apply into the major. So it's capped. Um, one thing that I'll say about that is that it's much more competitive to get admitted into um, the College of Engineering. So you might have an easier time getting into the College of Letters and Sciences, but it's not you know, guaranteed that you'll actually get into that program. So again, weigh the pros and cons of going through either college. Um, and then again, you know, EECS is a Bachelor of Science, com um, Computer Science is a Bachelor of Arts. Uh, that delineation means next to nothing. You're gonna be start, uh, studying a lot of the same course content. Um, one major difference between the two are that EECS is both a combination of software and hardware with uh, regards to their curriculum. 
So you're doing things like circuitry as well as coding in Python and JavaScript and C++ and everything like that. Whereas computer science is just the software component of it. It's, it's not doing anything with hardware. That's not to say that you can't take those classes if you want. It's just not part of the core curriculum that's mandated for graduation. Um, there's a lot more flexibility in computer science. There are a lot less uh, technical prerequisites. Whereas if you know you're you really only want to take engineering courses, you want to take STEM courses, that's it. You know, college of engineering eeks might be a better fit for you because you'll be doing a lot more humanities um, and social science courses as a part of the breadth courses mandated by the College of Letters and Sciences if you do computer science. Um, conversely, in eeks, you only have to do four non-engineering, non-STEM courses. So again, choose what you prefer. Um, and then lastly, uh, our College of Engineering, our EECS program has an ethics and specific math and physics requirements, whereas um, there are seven breadths that you need to fulfill within the College of Engineering or within the College of Letters and Sciences. So again, it's uh, the courses that you take outside of the major are going to be less focused on STEM in College of Letters and Sciences. They'll be more focused on STEM within uh, our College of Engineering. Also with computer science, it's one thing that I like to stress is that if you're not set on computer science, if you're not set on EECS, uh, you have a lot more flexibility within the College of Letters and Sciences to double major in something that has nothing to do with engineering. So say, for example, you're also really passionate about, you know, dance or public policy or taking the language. This is a lot easier to do through LNS than through COE. So keep those in mind and really just uh, evaluate the pros and cons of applying to either program if that's something that you're interested in. Great. So after talking about all the majors that we have in the College of Engineering, first, we're asking you the question through a poll asking you for where you are joining us from. And so besides that, let's talk about opportunities that you can do within the College of Engineering and specifically academic related. So besides doing single major or a double major here, here in the College of Engineering, a lot of some students, not a lot of them, would choose to do joint majors. So you are still eligible to graduate within four years. However, you get to take some classes that are from either from two majors and in that way you have to work it out with your academic advisor because it's definitely a lot harder for you to take um, classes from multiple engineering majors and the reason is just because engineering majors they're very demanding and by demanding I mean time consuming as well as you really need to put a lot of effort into every single class if you really want to do well and really learn the concepts well and from the poll I'm seeing a lot of you are from Southern California some of you from NorCal and some of you from other places in the US and some international students as well. So welcome once again. So besides doing majors, a lot of students would also choose to do minor in some sort of engineering, whether they are in the College of Engineering or not. And some of the most popular minors within the College of Engineering are definitely EECS as well as bioengineering. So these two minors are the most popular. So students, if you're interested in taking maybe five or six classes within the College of Engineering, but you did not get into a College of Engineering, I think minors is a good way for you to really get a taste of what certain engineering majors are like, and if you really like them and you want to do them as a career after you graduate from college as well. So in addition to majors, we also have certificate programs. So there are two different certificate programs, one of which is design innovation, and the other one is entrepreneurship and technology. So these two certificates basically allows you to take multiple classes within the College of Engineering. And once you have meet the requirements, you can then go and talk to your academic advisor. And these certificates would then show up on your transcript saying that you have completed these programs. In addition to that, there's one really special program that I definitely wish I would have learned about it before coming to Cal. And that is MET program. And that just stands for Management, Entrepreneurship and Technology. So this program basically combines engineering with business Business. So that was something that I, I was really interested in coming to Berkeley. And the reason is because if you're interested in doing both business and engineering, you get to basically double major if you get into this program. However, this is a very competitive program and I would highly recommend you to apply if you are coming into Berkeley as a freshman. So the acceptance rate into this program is around 2%. And so that basically translates to around 50 students. I know that sounds crazy. And I don't think I would ever get into this program if I were to apply before freshman year. But I do have a lot of friends who do apply and who do get in. So that just to show you that it is doable, it is possible. So really think about if this is something you're interested in. If it is, then really put a lot of effort into your application. Really think about why do you want to 
do double major in College of Engineering and in Hot School of Business as well. And I think that way would allow your application to stand out among a thousand other students who also apply to this program. Guys, she's being way too humble. And that's brilliant. She absolutely could have gotten into MET. <laughs> but anyways, moving on um, to College of Chemistry. Uh, so this is one of our smaller colleges here at Cal. It only houses around a thousand students. It's like the College of Engineering in that you have to apply directly and then you're directly admitted into your major for all four years. It is ranked number one globally. Uh, there are three majors, only three majors within the entire college, chemistry, chemical biology, and chemical engineering. As I said previously, chemical engineering is the only engineering major at Cal that isn't housed within the College of Engineering. So if you're applying, make sure you're applying for the correct college. Um, one thing that I also want to say about chemical engineering classes is that you can overlap them with engineering courses and electives, I believe up to three outside of the College of Chemistry. Um, additionally, we've had quite a few prestigious accomplishments come out of our College of Chem. Um, including several Nobel laureates. We recently had Jennifer Doudna who won a Nobel Peace Prize in chemistry, not, not Nobel Peace Prize, Nobel Prize in chemistry. Um, and then we've also had si 16 elements discovered on the periodic table. And you can probably see a couple of them that are named directly after Cal, Berkelium, Californium, and Seaborgium, which is named after Professor Seaborg who discovered quite a few of those elements. And so I'll pass it back to your name. So after talking about all the majors in engineering, let's talk about structure and class sizes. So basically every single engineering class can be broken up into three different sections. So one of which is lecture and then discussion section as well as a lab component. So that's pretty consistent throughout every single engineering course that you're going to be taking if you are gonna be majoring in one of the engineering majors. So for the lectures, all lectures are given by professors and those, and Lectures are some of the most amazing part that I have here at Berkeley. And the reason is because in lectures, you really get to learn from a lot of really prestigious professors who really do know what they're doing. And in addition to that, we have discussion sections that really support the lectures. And by supporting, I mean that they are, um, they're guided and led by graduate student instructors who we call GSIs here at Berkeley. So in discussion sections, the GSIs, they would go through the material that were covered in lecture and they would allow you to ask more questions. Sometimes they would hand out worksheets and discussion sections are also a great time for instructors to do quizzes, sometimes pop quizzes as well. So those are some of my least favorite parts about discussion sections, but those quizzes also really forces you to study, to stay on track and really to ask questions if you have them. And so in addition to lecture and discussion sections, we also have lab components. So labs are a little bit more challenging this year given COVID conditions. So before COVID, we get to go into the lab to do a lot of hands-on experiments, whether that is in chemistry and physics, or sometimes, for example, in bioengineering, we get to do circuit design. We get to really work through, design our own ECG to test on one of the students so we can pretend ourselves are patients. So those are the things that we do um, as a engineering student here at Berkeley. In addition to that, office hours is some of the most amazing times that I have before COVID and definitely through COVID that really allows me to stay on track as well. So in one of my classes, Bowie 101, which talks about instrumentation in medical imaging, for example, it really I go to every single office hours every single week. So that really just to show that not only would I be able to show the professor that I really do care about the course, but at the same time, I, I see going to office hours as opportunities for me to really ask questions to once again stay on track, but also at the same time to really interact with other students who are also really passionate about their learning. So every single person who goes to office hours, they just show that they really do care about their academics, but at the same time, they're there to learn from one another as well. So highly recommend office hours if you have the time to attend them as well. So in addition to that, we also have some variable class sizes really depending on the major. So I would say that generally the first two years at Berkeley, your class sizes are going to be a lot bigger than some of your junior and senior classes. So for example, for introduction to chemistry, for example, which is mandatory for many engineering majors, those classes can have a class size of around 500 students per lecture. And the reason is just because a lot of students are required to take them and therefore those classes are big. However, for technical classes, for example, all of my engineering classes right now, they have around 30 to 20 people. And the reason is just because those are very major specific. So only people in your major would be required to take these classes. And therefore, those classes are a lot smaller. So you are 
able to interact more with professors and with other students and really get to learn about other students in the class as well. So in addition to that, um, before COVID, we also do a lot of eye clickers in class. And so eye clickers are just great opportunities for you to really interact in class by choosing the right answer to a question. Sometimes the professors will be calling them quiz questions, but at the same time, they're not really quizzes. They're really just to test your understanding and it's a way for professors to do um, participation grades as well. However, in addition to that, I really see iClickers as opportunities for me to make friends with other students in the class. And the reason is because oftentimes for iClicker questions, we get to interact with other students next to us to really discuss through the questions to really brainstorm together, to really come up with a same um, idea that we think is the correct answer to the question that the professor um, proposes. So in addition to different classes, we also have a lot of resources for students. And this is not only just for engineering students, but for all students here at Berkeley in general. So for Student Learning Center, it is great opportunities for you to get free tutoring help. So if you're struggling in, in any of the classes or you need help going through midterm questions, final questions, or even read through your essays, for example, People in the Student Learning Center, which is short for SLC, are there to help you. And those, off, those services are free for students. So highly recommend you to take advantage of that if possible. In addition to that, as an engineering student, we do get a um, four-year academic advisor assigned to you. So if you have any questions, you're struggling with classes, you really want someone to go through your schedule with you, you can always make an appointment with your advisor and they will talk to you about your process, the path that you should take, and also just to talk to you about when you can graduate and how you might want to plan your four years here at Cal. So really a lot of opportunities for students. All right, moving on. I think one of the things that I really appreciate most about Cal as an institution is that it engenders student diversity and it's really trying to create an environment that is accepting of people regardless of their their gender, their religious affiliations, their backgrounds and the like. And so there are quite a few specific student organizations here on campus and in the College of Engineering that are committed to helping this diversity. Uh, for example, we have Women in Science and Engineering theme program. This is basically where you can live in the residence halls alongside other um, women identifying people that are trying to, you know, become prospective engineers to study STEM and things of that sort. It's a really great community for people that are trying to find other people like them. So. Uh, ladies, if you are interested in this program and living with other um, really, really fantastic admits, this is a wonderful one for you. Um, we also have the Black Engineering and Science Student Association. They hold some really great um, seminars. They disseminate resources on looking for jobs, applications, things of that sort. Um, same thing I can be said of Hispanic engineers and scientists. Um, all these programs also bring in some really fantastic panelists if you're interested in hearing about, you know, industry professionals and experts experiences as engineers. We also have the EOP um, STEM program, which is for first generation students like myself, um, who are, you know, trying to navigate college with very, very few familial resources. It's really fantastic. They can provide um, financial support. The eye clickers that Linnez may talked about earlier, um, they'll give you for free. Uh, if you're uh, struggling financially or just trying to um, finance your education in some way, shape or form, but they're a really fantastic resource that I would highly recommend for any first gen students. And then we also have the pre engineering program prep. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to drop them in the chat. All right, back to you. Thank you. So in addition to all the different um, different opportunities or organizations that you can participate in, you can also participate in a lot of clubs and competition teams that Berkeley has to offer. And so the ones that we have on the slide is definitely not a complete list. We have a lot of different clubs and we have over, I believe, 1200 clubs in total for the entire Berkeley community. So definitely, there's definitely a club that you are interested in um, if you do come to Cal. So the first one will be Cal Sol, and this is just a solar car team. So if you're interested in building solar cars, in joining competitions in regards to that field, then this is the club for you. And so in addition to that, one of my favorite clubs within the College of Engineering is Cal Steel Bridge Team. And so this steel bridge team is really amazing, and it is because it really allows students from different backgrounds to engineering, from civil engineering, from mechanical engineering, from many different fields to come together and brainstorm about how they are going to build some sort of steel bridge and do a competition. And so I believe in 2019, they actually won the first place in the regional round and they went on to the national round and won 
um, number six overall. So super huge accomplishment to those students. And those are really also opportunities once again to do besides academics, but also really do a lot of hands-on opportunities, hands-on experiments really to prep you um, for your career after Berkeley. All right, going on to talk a little bit about our labs and makerspaces. I love this because as a non-engineering student um, who captain a robotics team and is super into 3D printing and lathing and machine shops and everything of that sort, I love our makerspaces. They're fantastic. Um, and you also get a fat discount for being a student, which is great. Um, so getting a little bit more formal, uh, our, Sitar, our Sitar Jedi Hall houses our CITRUS program. CITRUS stands for Center for Inter Information Technology and Research in the Interest of Society. Um, these are students that are onboarding projects that work um, in things such as aviation and nanofabrication technology, um, where you can basically work in a lab alongside professors or graduate students, or you can do a project independent of mentorship. Um, and basically prototype and design new technologies in the interest of society. So it's a really great and fantastic program. And if you come back um, and visit the campus once we reopen in person, they have a really fantastic little center where a bunch of these student projects are on display. Next, we have Jacobs Hall, which houses the Jacobs Institute for Design Innovation, which is a semi-similar program to Citrus. Again, it's where students can create their own projects um, and get grant funding from the university and externally in order to work on these and finance them. In Hesse Hall, we have our mechanical engineering machine shop. Anybody that really likes to machine, um, that likes to CAD things and then um, cut them out on a three axis uh, mill, this is your shop. This was my shop. I loved working there. It was really, really fantastic for prototyping and it's a really cheap way to do it instead of outsourcing it to a firm. Um, also, it, I don't think it's mentioned on this slide, but there is a, um, there is a creator uh, creator space also uh, adjacent to the Sitar Jedi Hall, which basically you can use to 3D print a bunch of things to prototype. Um, and you don't have to be a COE student to use it. It's, it's again, really great. Uh, and then in Davis Hall, we have our Central Civil Engineering Construction Bay. It's actually the largest construction bay in the Bay Area. And it's where a lot of industry professionals will bring in their um, products in order to do a bunch of testing. So your labs, your classes will be looking directly out over this bay. Um, so it's a really fantastic opportunity to be sort of situated right in the middle of practical testing and use um, and get to learn from these uh, professionals. And then lastly, we have the Richmond Field Station, which is also a really great um, opportunity to learn. I think molecular biomolecular technology um, is either housed there or in Stanley. So I will pass it back to Renesme. So let's talk about research. So at the beginning of the tour, I said that Berkeley is research is a huge part of Berkeley. And that is definitely a really true statement for a lot of professors here at Berkeley. So this year, a lot of my classes when I'm taking a lectures, a lot of professors would um, jokingly say that if they stop doing research, they can basically retire because they do not know what they're going to do and they, they will be having no funds for their labs and therefore no funds for their PhD or postdoc students in their lab. So there are a lot of ways for you to get research here at Berkeley since I would say over 80% of all engineering students here at Berkeley have done some sort of research throughout their four years here at Berkeley. And there's just a lot of different opportunities for you to do so. So the first one would be URAP, which stands for Undergraduate Research Apprentice Program. And so this is also one of the easiest path for you to get research here at Berkeley. So basically this application will be opening up by the beginning of the semester for a week, I believe. And then you can then fill out different information and then look at different labs, different research topics that you're interested in, and therefore you can apply. And if you do get interview, and then if you pass the interview, then you will be doing research in that lab um, for the semester or for the year or for however long you will be doing in the research in that field. So in addition to doing URAP, one other way, which is my approach to research is to really interact with professors. Some professors are really passionate about talking their, talking about their research topics. So if you think the professor is doing something that you're interested in, my, my advice too would be that just to really talk to the professor either via email or during office hours, really ask about different research opportunities. And a lot of times professors would be like, yeah, just send me your transcript as well as your resume. I'm, I love to have more people helping out with me in the lab. So the professors, they're all super nice. Just reach out and they will definitely give you the opportunity if there is an open opening space in their lab. In addition to that, we also have Beehive. So Beehive 
actually works somewhat similar to URAP. However, it is more engineering focused. In addition to that, um, URAP is limited to the beginning of the semester. That is the time period for you to apply. However, for Beehive, it is year long um, application period. So any single time of the year, if you see a new opportunity pop up, that is the time for you to really apply to that research program um, position as well. And then you can then do research from there. In addition to that, Berkeley also has a national laboratory called Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. So a lot of students at Berkeley also do research in that lab as well. So that is around, I would say, 10 to 15 minutes of um, card ride from Berkeley. So a lot of students actually have a lot of fun just riding the bus up the hill to that place and do their research. In addition to that, we also have Satarjadai, um, Satarjadai Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology Center. And that is just a place for a lot of more research going on, more classes. And also there is something really cool called the Collider Cup. And this is basically a showcase of students work throughout the entire semester or throughout the entire year. Students during that um, time, they can present their projects to really show off of what they did and really show it off to different um, professionals in the field, but also at the same time too, sometimes there would be representatives from different companies to really come and really look at different projects and really see um, if there are any students that they would love to work with um, after they graduate from Berkeley. Now, just a quick but noteworthy congratulations to Berkeley's newest Nobel Prize winners. As I mentioned earlier, we have Jennifer Doudna who won the 2020 Nobel Peace Prize in Chemistry for her work in genome editing. Um, specifically the software CRISPR, which she developed in Berkeley's labs. And then also to Reinhard Genzel, who won the Nobel, uh, the Nobel Prize for Physics this year, um, or sorry, in 2020, um, which confirmed Einstein's theories of black holes. Perfect. So moving on, we have a lot of really cool alumni who came out of Berkeley. So the first one, if you're a high school students, you definitely need to know Rube Goldberg because of the um, the machine that you do one ball drops from here and then it triggers all the successive um, reactions. So that is him. And so he was an engineer, cartoonist, as well as a complex machine inventor um, who graduated from Berkeley. In addition to that, we also have one very special figure, which is Dean Liu. So she was she's the first female dean here at Berkeley. And she's also an amazing instructor researcher, as well as an administrator here at Berkeley. Next, we have Shavi. Um, Goldwasser and he won the Nobel Prize. And so he didn't win the Nobel Prize. Um, he won the Turing Prize. However, that for me just translates directly into Nobel Prize because that's how, how prestigious it is in that field as well. And lastly, we have Steve um, Wozniak and he was the co-founder of Apple. So those are some really notable figures that who came out of Berkeley. And lastly, last year, Berkeley ce celebrated 150 years of women in engineering. And that for me is an amazing achievement just to showcase how Berkeley really allowed students to, and to really come to Berkeley who are interested in engineering to study engineering at a very long time um, before other schools begin to do that. Yeah, thank you so much for that amazing tour to both Kelly and Renesmi. Um, so now we're going to I'm back again. I'm your moderator again. Uh, I'm going to start off and just ask a couple questions that were asked in the Q&A function during the first 45 minutes of the tour. Um, so we'll start with a question for Kelly. First question that came in is um, someone asked, what is there to do off campus? Any spots around the Bay Area that you recommend to students visiting? Any good places to eat around Berkeley? Just Overall, anything in the Bay Area slash Berkeley that you recommend to do if people ever come and visit Berkeley or are current students at Berkeley? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's incredibly important to balance your academic life here with just the rest of your life here. Um, and Berkeley is directly situated in the Bay, which is just a cultural epicenter. So I, I have so many recommendations, but I'll try to keep it brief. Definitely, if you're interested in arts, literature, cinema, there are just a, an amazing array of museums that are also that are both local to Berkeley, but also just available throughout um, SF in the Bay Area. Uh, there's plenty of music. We have the Greek theater right off campus with amazing artists coming in and out. Same thing with Bill Graham in, um, in SF. Mountain View has some amazing concerts and festivals outside lands in fall. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in music, definitely there. Um, there are a lot of really fantastic opportunities for people that are interested in research 
um, and professional societies, we have quite a few colloquiums that are held on campus that you don't necessarily have to be registered in a specific major or department for, but if you're interested in expanding your learning and just hearing some really fantastic speakers, those are held both on and off campus. So, and also just the food. Oh my Lord, the food is so good here in Berkeley. Go out. Um, if you are financially comfortable to, to just like try as many restaurants as possible here, but yeah, definitely get the most out of being here in Berkeley, both on and off campus. Yeah, Kelly summed it up pretty well. Um, there's just a bunch to do around Berkeley. And if you have, even if you don't have a car, we have um, BART, which is a Bay Area rapid transportation system and BART takes you everywhere. So like some people are like, oh, I don't have a car. I can't like go out on the weekends and do stuff. N no, you can. There's a bunch of public transportation that takes you everywhere around the Bay Area. So yeah, um, weekends, a lot of students, if they aren't like studying for an upcoming test, they go out and explore and hang out with friends. And it's just a great thing to do. Um, next question we have is for Renesmi. Um, so uh, someone asked in the Q&A, what's the gender ratio like in the College of Engineering? Um, you're obviously a bioengineering major, so specifically for your major and in your classes you've taken over the last years, uh, what has that kind of looked like? And then a follow-up question for myself is, are there any resources or communities for female identifying engineering students? That's a great question. So I was actually just talking about gender racial stuff with one of my professor in one of the office hours. So we actually did some quick research on the racial and we found that around, I would say 25% in the College of Engineering are female students and the, the other 75% are male students. So it's actually um, not as accurate in other majors. I would say this is pretty accurate in the in bioengineering specifically. However, if you were to do EECS, for example, there, there might be around 80 to 20 percent for male and female ratio just because of the specific majors. A lot more students, a, a lot more male identifying students, they're more interested in software engineering and therefore more students would then be applying to each major as opposed to bioengineering. However, for many of my classes, I would say that the 75 to 25 percent ratio still holds true for many of my bioengineering classes just because um, this is engineering and there is a lot more students who are male identifying who are interested in engineering than female identifying students however there's definitely a lot of res resources for women out there as well i think kelly mentioned in one of the slides which is the women in science and engineering theme program which is um, basically which basically allows all the female students who are interested in engineering to really come together. And I believe there's another um, program called Women in Engineering. So a lot of my friends, they're actually in that program and they really have a lot of fun to just really learn from one another. But at the same time, um, they really get to do some hands-on experience in engineering and to come up with solutions to the societal problems that we have currently. And so I think those are just some of the really awesome opportunities for you to do if you identify, identify yourself as a female. Yeah, thank you so much for that answer. And I think especially uh, we recently got a new dean for the College of Engineering and her herself being a female in engineering and that was a female professor in the engineering field. I think she tries to, you know, create a kind of cohesion within the College of Engineering because it is compared to other colleges uh, within UC Berkeley, a little bit more male dominated, but I think like talking to other friends in other engineering colleges, we do a pretty good job of just including females and trying to um, kind of get rid of that gender gap between female and males in engineering. Um, but yeah, now we'll go on to our next question. Our next question is back to Kelly. Uh, what are some popular engineering extracurriculars and overall just any advice on how to get a good balance of academic and social life? Yeah, of course. A lot of the engineering students that I know are a part of our competition team. So Cal Sol, Cal Steel Bridge, um, Concrete Canoe is one of my favorite ones. I think that's absurd, but amazing. Um, so yeah, so if you're really competitive, those are really great options. If you're into more sort of the entrepreneurial aspect of your extracurriculars, we have quite a few incubators. Um, so I think we have the Innovation of X program, which is sort of uh, as well as Skydeck, which are both geared towards getting students to develop ventures. So if you're very technically proficient and you're really good at web development or trying to um, sort of build out various digital platforms or things like that, or just create an engineering venture in general, fantastic resources for you. Like Renesme said, I think we're the leading undergraduate um, producer of startups and ventures. So if you're more entrepreneurial, great program. 
Um, but how can you get a good balance of academic and social life, you ask? Um, it's on you, it's on you. you. You definitely have to work on your time management skills. I think college is very, very different from high school in that you're afforded all of this free time. And it's really up to you to plan out your days such that you're committing a portion of your time to your studies and your academics, but also to you know your mental health, having fun. You don't want to be miserable your four years. You want to make sure that you're incorporating good relationships with your friends and your professors and just you know having a good time. So, so take it upon yourself to join clubs that might not just be looking good for your grad program. Things that you will genuinely enjoy and that'll take you know, stress off of your shoulders whenever you're in midterm season, final season and things like that. Seek out opportunities. We have club fairs um, and just community here at Cal, I think is really, really important, but seek out. You get what you put in, in terms of um, the work that you do searching for things. So yeah, definitely look for that balance. Yeah, and those are kind of the all the live questions we're going to um, answer today. And we're going to go on to our last question, which is how we end off basically every virtual visit. Um, just asking you both why you decided to apply to Berkeley and what made you make the decision to actually come to Berkeley. So we'll start with Renesme and then go to Kelly because I feel like Kelly's going to make us all cry. It'll be one of her last Berkeley stories. Um, so yeah, just want to hear from you both. So I actually did not have a good reason of why I applied to Berkeley. I guess that's probably because I lived in the Bay Area for over 10 years. So I thought that Ber Berkeley is just really close to where I'm from, which is Palo Alto. So I thought that this might be a good school to apply to. And my parents really loved Berkeley. So when I got the admission letter, my parents immediately told me to commit to Berkeley. At that time, I was like, no, I don't want to come to Berkeley. I want to go out of state to other universities. Um, I'm not interested in Berkeley at that time. However, I just listened to my parents because I thought that they could be right on this one. So when I first come to Berkeley, I do came from a really, really tiny high school with around 70 students who graduated with me that year. And all my classes were less than 10 people. So when I first came to Berkeley, I was in complete shock. And the reason was because I was in 500 people lectures. I did not know where I belong. I wasn't really going to office hours. I wasn't really know what I was doing. Um, I, I wasn't really shining, I would say. So at that time I was kind of miserable and how I coped with that was that I tried to take classes that are non-STEM related. So I took a lot of classes in the College of Letters and Sciences to really just to know more people outside of engineering. And I think that that strategy really helped me to really widen my vision about college in general and really get to talk to more students about their perspective on, for example, choosing a major and how to live their college life, for example. In addition to that, I think this year, especially for COVID, really what really helped me was office hours. I get to attend them to really meet new friends in office hours, but also at the same time to really talk to professors about my time here at Berkeley, about their perspective on Berkeley, but also at the same time on um, their advice for me in life, but also in the career decision after graduating from Berkeley as well. So I think those opportunities really allow me to really realize that Berkeley is such a diverse university, it is such a diverse place that really offers you with so many different opportunities. And this is just a school that really gives me hope about my, my I would say, academic journey, but also at the same time, my journey after graduation. Because I know that as a Cal student, um, other companies are going to be really amazed about what I do as a Berkeley student. And the reason is just because Berkeley is such a prestigious school. And so a lot of companies, they would just look at you and be like, we want you just because you're a Berkeley student. And I think that fact really gives me hope about my future, about applying to grad school, for example, and even beyond that, applying to um, any of the jobs that are out there here in the Bay Area. All right, I guess it's my turn. <laughs> Um, so, so when I was applying to colleges, I was a, I was a first generation student, so I had no idea what I was doing to be, to put it bluntly. Um, I had very little guidance. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to go the pre-law track or the engineering track because I was coming out of an engineering high school. Um, I'd gotten waitlisted at my dream school, which was Yale, and I'd gotten into Cal and a bunch of California and East Coast schools. So I was, everything was very, very much so up in the air for me. Uh, but I think it really came down to three primary reasons that I ended up going to Cal, and they are also the three reasons that I've ended up really loving and cherishing my experience here. So one is the research. Cal has and provides unprecedented research opportunities. And when I say that, I'm not just trying to, you know, beef up the school or anything like that. I mean unprecedented. I was able to get a paid research position the summer after my freshman year, and I don't think I could say that at any other university. 
and not only for STEM, which is more traditional to other universities, but for a wide variety of topics. So, so regardless of your department, you know, seek out research opportunities and seek them out early on. They're a lot easier to get here than you might be able to get at any other college. Um, the second thing is the professors, the quality of the instructors here is again unparalleled. We're being taught by Nobel laureates, by experts in their fields, by people that are not only generating um, technologies and research, but just new forms of learning. We developed the Lewis dot structure here, which I'm sure you all learned in your chemistry classes. Um, and, and not only that, but, but these instructors are not only experts, they care. Um, I can't say that obviously of every single professor at the school, but you know, I've developed some really fantastic relationships with my professors and my instructors, one of which even offered to help me cover rent one semester when I was trying to figure out whether or not I should drop out because I couldn't afford it. Um, so, oh, I'm gonna cry. Anyways, uh, research, uh, our instructors are fantastic. And then lastly, just like, the student body is so cool here. Everybody really, cares about what they're doing. They're incredibly passionate about social justice, about trying to engender an environment that's really welcoming for students, regardless of their backgrounds. And they're so brilliant. They are so freaking brilliant. Um, so it is, it is incredible to be surrounded by a student body of, of kids that are not only incredibly intelligent, but really compassionate. And sort of this is the environment that I really needed in a school. And it's one where I've, you know, cherished my time here. So before I cry on a tour with random strangers. Sorry about that, this is my last one. Um, I really hope you guys make your decisions and, and love where you end up going. Note that for anybody that's struggling with finances or, or thinking about college, transferring in is also a really, really great option. You don't have to go all four years. Um, and yeah, go Bears. Thanks guys. Thank you so much to both of you for those amazing Berkeley stories. I'm going to go ahead and share some uh, ways to contact us after this presentation. Hopefully you enjoy learning about Berkeley College of Engineering or just Berkeley in general. We have a bunch, bunch of other departments and majors and colleges you can um, get involved in and apply to. So we have firstly our U visit tour. I know, you know, Zoom isn't what we all wish for. We all wish to be on campus giving campus tours to you guys. And the U visit tour is honestly the best option at this moment. If you go to uvisit.com slash Berkeley, you can kind of have a 3D experience into what UC Berkeley is. You can walk inside of the buildings, have people talk at different places. And it's, I've checked out the website and it's really, really cool. You can also follow us on Instagram at visit UC Berkeley. Um, any questions that we didn't um, get to answer today, just email tour at berkeley.edu and an ambassador will answer your question. We have a blog where we have written format of all of these cool stories at beartalk.berkeley.edu. As I said before, check out our YouTube channel at visit UC Berkeley for other recorded virtual visits. Um, we also talked about 150 years of women in engineering. Um, so our 150W celebration is available at 150W.berkeley.edu. Of course, engineering.berkeley.edu if you don't want to learn more about um, like what the college has to offer. And then lastly, visit.berkeley.edu if you want to go to a panel, different language tours, or just like a general um, virtual tour if you want to learn about the other colleges. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us today and spending this hour with us. I know we went a couple minutes over. Um, and thank you again to Renesme and Kelly for giving this amazing tour today. Um, and with that, we're going to end off our tour like we end off um, kind of everything at Berkeley. And that's with a big um, good go, to, um, go Bears. So we'll do a Go Bears on three if everyone, wa everyone wants to unmute themselves. One, two, three. Go Bears! Go Bears. Go Bears. Thanks, everyone.